This is The Wheel Weaves, a Wheel of Time podcast with no spoilers. Hey everyone, I'm your host Annie, and I'm the first time reader going through this series chapter by chapter. As always, there's no spoilers past the chapter we're covering, and that means it's totally safe for first time readers. I'm joined by my co host Brett, who's a longtime fan, and he's guiding me through this journey. We'd like to acknowledge and thank our executive producers, Brandy and Aaron Kirkwood, Andre the Man in White, Chad Welsh, Sean McGuire, Ricky Morissette, Yanis, Albert Lorenzo, and Eddie Costello. And before we get into things today, we just want to thank and welcome Jacob Leavitt, Pasut, and Haley to the Wheel Weaves Patreon team. Thank you so much for your generosity and your support. We really, truly appreciate it. In this episode, we are talking about chapters 7 and 8 of Lord of Chaos. Yeah, so chapter 7, we have A Matter of Thought, and chapter 8 is The Storm Gathers. Yeah. And I know what you're thinking. These were probably the most exciting chapters in the entire book, and you're right. Nothing else happens. You That's know, it. I knew something. <laughs> I knew this was a bad idea. No, oh, no. I knew something was going to happen. It's super predictable. Yep. It's like literally anytime anyone is going unprepared into Teleron Riyadh, shit's going to happen. Don't it's do it. It's just like at this point, okay. idiots. I got to say, although these chapters were like a hot mess of uh, Lane and Nynaeve's thoughts, mm-hmm. it's just like just the worst. Like in their brains, it's terrible being in there. I feel like it's just being in my own brain, like in a book. <laughs> and it's like, I don't want that. Nobody <laughs> wants this. But yeah. I feel like there's a lot of like intricacies and dynamics between people. And we got to pick out some of those things. In these chapters. Sure. I'm, I mean, there is stuff to talk about. Stuff yeah. does happen. I'm just annoyed with all of the things that happen. Yeah. How's that? It's like, why are you doing that? That. Don't go into the haunted house that you know is haunted. Don't go in there. Don't do it. Yeah. Shoot. Yeah. So. Well, if it isn't the consequences of my own actions. <laughs> right. God. All the time. All the time. All the time with these women. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Let's get into the fun fact. We'll get into the chapters okay? Yeah, okay okay so this is a, a fun fact that i've been waiting for for a little while because we've done this fun fact before but this is an expanded version of it because and it's also interactive so it's going to be extra fun for me not for you mm, but this is why you were safeguarding your yeah i was notes. like don't look at my notes because the answers are here so i was never gonna look at your notes. you're always looking okay at the beginning of the shadow rising i did a fun fact on the most and least popular chapter symbols for the first three books and now i want to have another go at this and see where we stand and the last time i made you i don't want to so we're doing it again it's gonna be fantastic because i'm all about the chapter symbols yeah i like the chapter symbols but oh love it okay do you want to go over the results from last time so you like you know where we're at yes okay 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 start thinking chapter symbols we see a lot of them there's a heck of a lot of them all over the place (sighs) oh okay. okay yeah I'm just going to, I'm just heads up now. I'm just picking random ones that come to my mind. I hate that so much. Okay. All right. So the most popular from the first three books, and this is what we covered the last one, in fact, Mm -hmm. we had a tie for the most number of chapter symbols of like that one specific symbol. We had two tie for first place. Okay. We had the wheel and snake at 19 occurrences in the first three books. Okay. For book one, two, three, it was three, seven, nine for anyone interested. And the Flame of Tarvalin had okay. 19 occurrences as well. Mm-hmm. And it was 388. So it's pretty pretty good split. Okay. Okay, so those are the most popular. F- Wheel and Snake, Flame of Tarvalin. And then the least were the, like, dragon, right? Yeah, because we got that one occurrence at, the, like, the very end of the Dragon Reborn. Right. That's where the dragon symbol popped up. Mm-hmm. And then we had the Great Tree from the Ogier Grove. Yeah. Right? That one popped up one time in the Great Hunt. Mm. So those were the least, and that was a tie too, where there was two with one occurrence. Okay. So it's very interesting because in the first three books, two had were tied for number one, and then two were tied for like last place. So interesting. And this time in the first five books, we're doing oh, one, we're two, doing, three, four, five. We're doing all five books. One, two, three, four, five. Not just like the last two. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Okay. Sure. We have definitive winners and losers <laughs> there is no tie there's no tie for first place and okay. no tie for last place okay so i'm super excited all right so this is where the guessing comes into play and i need you to tell me first place flame who... of tarvalin you really went for that there yeah that makes the most sense because yep. we've seen it the most more than the wheel and snake well, because it, it was it tied was, after it was, three it books it was already 
in first place after three books and in no 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 it wasn't it was tied for first that's place that's what i'm saying it was up there okay it was okay. like one of the first it was in first place like they're both in first place that's okay. what happens when you have a tie at the top yeah they're both in first place and so in the fourth and fifth book i would say that we saw the flame of tarvalin more than we saw the wheel and snake and more than we saw like any other ones that probably couldn't catch up okay is that your final answer? Yeah. Okay. You are, drum roll. Right. Incorrect. Damn it. Oh, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, you're, you're wrong. So the Wheel and Snake takes first place. Shoot. It had 30 occurrences. The oh. Flame of Tarvalin had 29. Shit. You were just like right there. Mm. Holy smokes. Okay. And then just for like interesting note of like the next three, because Wheel and Snake had 30, Flame of Tarvalin had 29. Yeah. And then the next one, do you want to guess like third place? Any idea? Um, I won't make you guess like fourth and fifth place because it's not fair. But the next most popular. <laughs> we need a, we need an answer, please. Uh, <laughs> the dragon fang. Hot diggity. You are correct. Dragon's fang at 17 occurrences. Okay. Interestingly, had zero occurrences in the fires of heaven. Oh. Yeah. We didn't see that at all in book five. Okay. Yeah. We've so already all, seen it once in Lord of Chaos. Yeah. All of it came from early on. So, and then number four was the Avenda Sora Leaf at 15 occurrences and the wolf symbol at 14. Oh. And we also got zero wolf symbols in yeah, Fires of did. Heaven. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. So, yeah. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Now, least popular. Least popular, which is very interesting. Like I said, there's no ties in this one. There is a definitive loser for only one occurrence in all five books. And I want to know if you remember which one we've seen one time. There's like, I feel like there are several we've only seen one time. No? There is only one that we have only seen once in the first five books. I know it's tough, right? Mm-hmm. Because remember, we saw the dragon one, for like book one of three. It was the dragon oh, is one. Oh, you know which one it is? is one. And the only reason I know which one this is is because I noted it. And then also somebody pointed out to me that it was... um. Unless we saw it, no. Unless we saw that one more. I don't think we saw Shoot, it. okay. <laughs> the bull for... um. The what? The bull, like the Red Bull one. Remember the Red Bull one for Gareth Bryn? Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. Is that your final answer? Uh, yeah, I feel like we did. Because I for sure... Because we talked about that one a lot. We did. We sure did. And then somebody like talked to me about it later. Yeah. And I really don't think we got that one ever okay. again. Okay, okay. You are wrong again. I'm wrong? <laughs> Did we see it again? We did. We got it two times. Okay, so here we go. Oh, what? The least popular chapter symbol was the two birds and star in the square shape from the Shadow Rising, the Wave Dancer chapter. Oh, the sea folks. Yes, we got it one time and never again. And then every th we've got four that had two occurrences. The bull was one of them. We saw that bull again. We what? also get. Oh, I thought. Yeah, I, I thought mean, it was like. Hey, I, I, I got my stats here, so don't. <laughs> no, I believe you. We got two, also tied for like two occurrences. The Adam. Yeah. And then we've got two of that great tree, mm -hmm. and then we've got two of the withered tree from the Eye of the World. Okay. Exactly. Okay, fun guessing game. That was fun for me. Are we ready to <laughs> move on? <laughs> yeah, let's do this. Okay, so last time with our heroes. Rand and Matt have some secret plans yes. of their own. Super secret. The Forsaken have even more secret plans, like from each other. <laughs> yeah. And like this on is, their own. I gotta say, like, if we want to talk about this book, this is just like such a convoluted book of plans and what people think is happening. Yeah, like I'm already confused. We so. really get into the whole misinformation of everything. It's mm. just like it's fantastic. Okay. And now, last time we saw Nynaeve and Elaine, we got that they are in Saladar, and they have Mogedian as their captive. Totally. Who was the chick from the boat. Yeah. And I was right. Yep, that happened. Let's throw that in there. Yeah. Now, we also know that the rebel Aes Sedai group are sending a group of Aes Sedai to Camelin with Min. Yes. And Elaine is pissed about that because she also wants to see Ram. Yeah, she's a jelly monster. Yeah, she is. Which is like fair. I get that. Yeah, me too. All right. So chapter seven, A Matter of Thought. We get the dream ring, Terangriel. Hey, 
Hey, are nah, you coming we over? got Teller and Riyadh. Are you coming over to the side? Symbol. That this is the ring? No, I'm not at all. <laughs> I don't know why. I never I know. tried to con- I, I never tried to fool you with this one. I know. The Teller and Riyadh. Yeah. That's what it is. Okay. Yep. No, like it is. It is because it is the ring that gets you there. Yeah. It's also just the dream. It's the dream world. Ooh, symbol. Ooh, circles. Yeah. <laughs> All right, okay. so we enter in an Elaine perspective. Mashed potatoes, here we go. Yeah. Let's do this. God. It's okay. She actually <laughs> proves herself a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> it's good. All right. I just know how you feel about her, and I know yeah. that it's not how other people feel about her. It's like, okay, it's growing. She's doing more things. She's always better when she's doing things. Hey, right? I've always said that about a character yeah. in a book. Because sometimes she's just like, yeah, I'm going to go kick ass. And then sometimes she's like, I'm just going to observe. And then I'm just like, going to do nothing and whine about it. Exactly. Yeah. So, okay. Which she does a lot of whining. I mean, like a little, like, yeah, six out of ten. All right. So Elena's is currently getting ready for bed. She's giving us the rundown on how things are going in Saladar. And then I felt the need to put in brackets, what's a rundown? <laughs> that's funny. That's a great joke, actually. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So here's what's going on in Saladar right now. She has been making mm-hmm. new Terangriel, which yep. we got in the prologue already. But it seems like it's ramped up a lot. Oh, yeah. Just like tons of them. Like that and is like what... like copying ones that they already have. Copy, 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 copy. And it's like she also mentions that she's attempting to make them. She's making and attempting. So like it doesn't work every single time. But yeah. she is working 24-7 almost. Like it's a lot. Yeah. So we also get that the supplies in Saladar are being rationed because there are tons of people here and she is also doing her best not to complain about this whole situation. Yeah, by like thinking about complaining. But hey, we have an awesome callback and I just want to point it out here. Okay. Because it's like a nice little piece of Elaine trivia. Now she is currently, if you noticed, she's currently nursing a sparrow with a broken wing. I didn't notice that. Yeah, she has it in like a little cage, oh, in a little wicker cage. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. She's nursing a sparrow back. Now, when we first met her, when Rand fell into the garden in Camelin, and then like Elaine and Gowan came up, and they're like, oh my god, okay. She was nursing. Uh, she, so the thing that Gowan said was, she's always finding stray cats and birds with broken wings. You're the first human being she has had to work on. Oh. So it's just like a callback of she does do this kind of thing. That's and it's just cute. like six books later. It's great. Okay. And yeah. she's still doing it. And she's still doing it. All right. Okay, Elaine. We get it. We love it. <laughs> All right. So Nynaeve is also here and they're both getting ready because they have a meeting to get to in Teleranariad. Yeah. It takes a long for, time for us to like actually figure out what the meeting is. Yeah. It's... But it's with the Aes Sedai. It is, with yeah. the Aes Sedai from Saladar, who all w- are all, like, come bustling in, who all want to learn about Teleranion. Yeah, it's like the six but main ones. they are in no mood to actually be students. It's awful. Welcome. All of this is the worst idea I've ever Welcome heard. Welcome to the Aes Sedai. <laughs> this is worse than the idea of channeling on that <laughs> ship and... Oh, man, okay. Anyway. Okay. All of it. All of it's terrible. Yeah. It does, yeah. So it's like a lot of back and forth. Like, this is oh, worse meeting. than flying around Ten Chico. Is it when worse? When the Black Ash are looking for you. Uh, I, I, this mm. is this is worse than that, and I will explain along the Actually, way. Actually, yeah, no, I, I, I have feel, yeah several I feel points bad. about how terrible ideas, uh, how terrible an idea this is. Yeah. So Elaine has a few thoughts about the heat and the weather. It's an issue. It is an issue, but Kate, I actually have a thought. Okay. About this. Okay. We've been talking about it now, seven chapters. It's been mentioned enough it's times. It's been mentioned, the end of the last book, it's hot, it's dry, yeah. the weather's bad, it's clearly not natural, it's clearly the dark one, it's supposed to be like winter already, it's bad. Sure. So, this reminds me of when the spring was terribly cold Okay. in the eye of the world. Okay. The weather was bad. It was unnatural and it was bad. Senbui was right. <laughs> we <That's>... don't <laughs> right? Okay. okay. Anyway, what I was going to say is everything was really bad. It was cold, there was no crops growing. It was all really terrible. So, when they went to the blight to the eye of the world, yeah. they did a bunch of stuff. I'm still not really 100% sure, sure what happened there. But when Drove they... Drove the blight back. Somehow, whatever. Yeah. I don't get it. 
they left and it was almost like the weather stuff had lifted. Okay. And there was already signs of spring. Okay. So here. So what are we getting at We here? have to have some kind of dark one fight or some sort of fight. Got to take him down a peg. Yeah. I like that. No, that's a good, that's a good thing. Something has to, because that's what cured it last time. Okay. I don't understand what Go happened last time. punch him in the blight again. P- punch him in the blight. Yeah. That's what punch I always say. Punch him in say. his team. No, no, no okay. don't do that. Okay, okay. But you know what I'm saying? No, I get There's it. There's got to be some sort of like... Is that like, okay, hold up. Are you making a prediction for like the end of the book where it's like, ooh, this is like the big overarching theme and going to um, be another stroke against the I dark one? I don't know if that's really how this is going to go. Okay. But I do think that at some point there will be, I don't know if it's like end of book thing or sure. whatever. At some point there's going to be some kind of interaction, some kind of d- d- dual battle situation. Sure. sure. And the weather will get better. It's going to get fixed. So it's not a yeah. permanent problem. It's just like it's going to get fixed. Well, again. it's a permanent problem if <clears throat> nobody does anything about it. Okay. Uh, which actually, good segue, because she thinks that if the sea folk could do anything about it, they, they would, would have. have by now. Mm-hmm. But yeah, because like they're good with weather stuff, clearly, because like the weaves on the boats, right? So. Right. Okay. Now, anyway, the Aes Sedai are working Elaine very hard making these terrain real. And we get that Mogadian is still here, and Elaine and Nynaeve are taking turns wearing the bracelet Adam. Yep. Plus, Brigida is watching Mogadian too sometimes. Yep. So we just sort of get like a... Recap this, what's going on. Where is everybody? Yes. And now Elaine is getting pretty antsy because they will be waiting. And of course, I assume that it's the wise ones and like Egwene. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You thought that. Yeah. yeah I feel okay. like it's set up for us to think that. Yeah, okay. Because like, that. why else that. would they be... You know? Yeah. Okay. Or either, yeah, either the wise ones or like Swan and Liana. Like, cause they, cause we saw that at the end of. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, Fires of Heaven. But anyway, so Elaine picks up the ring triangle and there's a bunch of description about what she's been up to with making these. Yeah. She has made a whole bunch of these imitation rings from the design of the original and they're super complex to make. And she is getting better at making copies, but none are perfect replicas. And I have to say, this is bold. This that is she's super making them? bold. It's not bold that she's making them, but it's bold that she's trying them out. I don't know. I just thought like... Sure. They're not exactly right. You're going into Teleronrad where there are... All sorts of dangers. Yeah. Like, what if you entered Teleronriad and you did this one terrain real wrong and now you can't leave it? Yeah. I mean, that's a very real issue where we've heard that Aes Sedai who study Terangriel, there have been... Disappearances. Well, you know, there's... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, there's been consequences and, like, all that kind of thing. But she's doing a pretty good job. And, I mean, it helps that she is super powerful. Like, she is stronger in the one power than most other Aes Sedai. So, like, there's a few things that are going for her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah. But, yeah, it's it's dangerous. It's not safe. No. So. It's not safe. And yeah. I just, I can't believe what's happening right now. Yeah. This whole thing. And I right away was like, oh, what's going to go wrong in this chapter in <laughs> Teleron Ah, uh, Boom, it explodes. <laughs> right away. Like, I, I immediately yeah. was on guard for, like, okay, well, something's yeah. going to happen here. Well, the entire description, too, like, goes on for, like, two pages of well, because the design like and the colors, the colors and the colors have the to colors, be. The colors, the colors, yeah. Yeah, I feel like there's more to this. than There's more, like, in like design schematics type stuff that I just can't pick out of it. But there's got to be there's got to be something. Well, I going still on can't here. even picture the stupid thing. So it's a Mobius strip. It's just like a. Mm-hmm. You take a piece of paper, you twist it, and then you connect it. Yeah, Boom, there you, you go. Keep saying that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make it. I'll make it for you after. Yeah, That's I good. can't wait. Okay. All right. So Elaine gets into bed, and her and Nynaeve have drank some sleepy. Sleepy tea. time tea. Sleepy yep. time tea, and. She also wishes that Egwene would get better. Yeah, time frame. This is interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because she was injured a month and a half ago yeah. when Maureen and Lanfear died. And we get in this chapter, these next two chapters, <laughs> a lot, a lot, a lot of reference to Maureen being dead. And I think it's uh, hilarious. Oh, yeah. We also get a lot of references to one other specific Aes Sedai, who is a green, who might now hold Lan's water bond oh oh man yeah we'll, we'll talk about okay. that when we get there Whoa. <laughs> like, we'll, we'll talk, we'll talk because about also she's there. like the day that morena lanfear died and the day that lan vanished, vanished. 
right? Right. Okay. Okay. So the wise ones have said that she's been getting better, but right now the only information that Elena and Nynaeve have is basically whatever Sheriam and the Hall decide to let them in on because our... The Aes Sedai meeting the Wise Ones instead of Elaine and Nynaeve now? Is that what's happening? So we get this breakdown a little bit later in the chapter, but I'll just do it now to clarify things. So originally it was a Gwen and a Wise One meeting Nynaeve and Elaine, and they were meeting. Yeah. But then once Elaine and Nynaeve got to Saladar, the Aes Sedai were like, no, 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 you're not allowed to go anymore. Well, they got in trouble. So then the Aes Sedai were meeting with Egwene and the Wise Ones. And now that Egwene's injured, now it's just the Wise Ones meeting with the Aes Sedai. And you can terrible. imagine how horribly that's going. Yeah. Because the the Wise Ones hate when people are terrible in Teleranriad and they're in Teleranriad. And the Aes Sedai terrible. are terrible. And they're also like super arrogant. It's going really bad. Yeah. It's so, the dynamic is just like I said, between characters is so funny when you think of what's actually happening here. So now Elaine and Nynaeve are on the <laughs> sideline. This is and the th- worst storyline. That's the thing. They're getting zero info except for whatever Sherry M and like the six decide to tell them, which and is it's probably nothing. nothing. It's nothing. It's the <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> Gosh. It's great. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. So also we get that Min and the other Aes Sedai should be about halfway to Camelin by now. Yeah. So good to know. Min is incoming to Camelin. We'll see. Yeah. So Elaine and Nynaeve go to sleep and enter Teleron Riyadh. And they're in Saladar. And then we get a long recap about what Teleron Riyadh is. <laughs> right. And a bunch of the rules about Teleron Riyadh. Yeah. And then also Swan and Lyanna are showing up here too. Yeah, I did want to say like mechanics wise of the Adam, or not the Adam, of the uh, Terangrail that they're oh, using. Oh, yes, yeah. We get a bunch of times that she's making copies of copies. And it's just like the thing that I keep thinking of is like a photocopy, where if you make a photocopy of a photocopy. It starts to look like shit. Yeah, it's like, is that why these Terangrail, when she's making copies, then you're like less substantial? Does it have something to do with that? I don't know. Does it matter? I, I don't, don't think so. It doesn't, I don't yeah. think that analogy works with. I like Terangrial. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't know that, enough about Terangrial or photocopies. I think because it's like, ve- <laughs> I think it's just like the very specific weaves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That go into creating something. Sure. Maybe. Good enough. All right. So Swan is very annoyed right now that the Aes Sedai aren't just here. And I was like, wait a minute, what Aes Sedai? Yeah. Like, what's happening? Because the last time we left off, the other ones were just sort of like learning yep. a little bit, like piece by piece. Now they're professionals and uh, they're just like walking around all smudgely. It's so. literally the worst. So, <laughs> so Swan's like annoyed. Did we even mention Swan and Liana are here too? Yeah, I mentioned that. Okay, okay. Yeah. You I don't, don't know if you mentioned me? that. I was like, I was pretty focused on that whole photocopy thing. I don't know. Yeah, no, I mentioned yeah. it. Okay. Um, but the sisters are just terrible students Mm -hmm. they think they know everything but they don't just dream themselves into saladar yeah they dream themselves into their beds like where they physically are and then wake up and then they're just like walking down the street walk (laughs) to where the meeting place is and you know they are being taught right now but they're acting like they're in charge yes of course no surprise so the six i said i appear up the street and just from looking at them, the sisters look like they're complete beginners at this. Yeah, because they're doing the whole like uh, their clothes, clothes are, are flashing. Like, yeah. It's like they, they can't. Don't... It's a matter of thought. Yeah, yeah. They I do like th- close straight. I do like the note here that the sisters just like don't accept that Teleranrod has nothing to do with the one power because we have learned that that. Teleronrod has nothing to do with the one power. Yeah. People who have nothing to do with the one power can get there yeah. because we've got lots of examples. We've got wise ones. We've got wolves. We've yeah. got like Perrin. Debatably, we've got like Slayer too because we don't know like that True, whole situation. Okay. There's like a lot of examples mm-hmm. of Teleronrod does, I mean, even Brigida, right? Like the yep. Heroes of the Horn, nothing to do with the one power. Yeah. It's a separate entity, mm-hmm. but they don't buy it. No. Yeah. It's annoying. So then we get a bit of a conversation that we overhear from the sisters as they're walking up. And it seems pretty important. Yeah, I did find it interesting because they cut off when they get like close enough. But you know how sometimes in Teleranra, there's like things are louder and you can just hear stuff. Yeah, we like hear the whole thing. Do they think that they're being quiet up until the point where they're like, oh, we better. (laughs) Honestly, I don't know. I have no idea what these ladies are It's a great conversation. Okay, so Sherry M is saying... 
We'll scorn our choice, but they will scorn any choice we make. We might as well stay by our decision. Yeah. So they've made a decision. We just don't know what the decision is just yet. Okay. And I'm actually trying my best to learn who these Aes Sedai are. And I like can't. That's okay. So Morvrin yeah. is one. We got like the six main Aes Sedai who are kind of sort of running Saladar okay. right now. So she mentions that they've had to put in a lot of work into the hall to get them to accept it. Yes. And then Morel, who I know, says... As long as no ruler scoffs, why should we care? And Anaya says, what ruler would dare? No king or queen knows enough of what passes among Aes Sedai to understand. Only the sisters' opinions need concern us, not theirs. Okay. What's going on? Okay, so breaking it down, it only matters. So they've made a decision. We don't know what the decision is yet. And they've worked really hard to get the hall that they've created to accept the decision these six have made. Because mm-hmm. we know they've picked like a little tower with three from each Aja to be like the yes, sitters. yeah. But these six are still kind of like in control. Kind of, yeah. Kind of, sort of. Now, as long as no nation, king, or queen makes a big deal of whatever decision they've come to, you know, it's good. But no ruler is really going to say anything because they don't understand Aes Sedai business anyways. Okay. So the only thing that really matters is what do other Aes Sedai think of their decision. Mm. Okay? Mm -hmm. The one big decision we know that these six are trying to come up to and the Hall is trying to like figure out is what's the one big decision they need to agree on? If they should go back to the tower? Nope. If they should support Rand? Nope. They have one job right now. We gotta pick a new... Amerlin. There we go. Okay, we figured it out. Yeah. So it sounds like because we get a whole lot of back and forth in these chapters. I didn't pick that up at all. Yes, totally. (laughs) It's like hinted at a hundred times because Swan's like, the one thing they need to do is pick an Amerlin and they haven't done it yet. It's like, what are they waiting for? Why haven't they done it? So it seems like they may have come up with a decision here. Ooh, okay. And the concern is making sure that other sisters agree with their due decision. Obviously makes sense. But I got to do a little bit of callback here. Fires of Heaven, chapter 27. We have the original rules for the new Amerlin that they wanted to pick. This was a long time ago. This was what Swan, like, basically convinced them of? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because, like, the six Aes Sedai kind of were like, oh, she should be a skilled negotiator. She should be someone of reason and cool logic. And then Swan suggests, it seems to me that whoever you choose should be someone who was not in the tower when I was deposed, someone who no one could accuse of choosing a side that day. And then Liana says, someone very strong in the power, the stronger she is, the more she can stand for all that the tower means. And then the six t- sisters agree. And then Swan thinks to herself, it won't be hard to bring them around to the idea that the new Amerlin should be one who can be guided by them. That makes sense. The six eyes that I obviously want to guide the new Amerlin. Mm-hmm. And unknowingly, Swan thinks, they and the Amerlin she chose for her replacement. So Swan is thinking, I'm choosing who the replacement is would be guided by herself. She and Moraine had worked too long to find Rand and prepare him to risk the rest of it being bungled by somebody else. Okay. So, Swan has Mm -hmm. figured out, (laughs) from the sounds of it, it seems like they've come up with a decision of who the new Amarlin is. Okay. Yeah. And they haven't, Swan's not in on that. She's not privy to that information if she's, like, complaining this whole time. We don't know that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Because Swan can lie now. Yeah. She can, which also is very important. Yeah. So. Okay. Very important. Yeah. I know it's a Gwaine. I know that you think that it is. (laughs) I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. Well, originally, didn't you say it was Moraine? Yeah. That made the most sense to me that Swan wanted, like, Moraine. Sure. In, oh, someone who's very strong, someone who wasn't there, someone who can guide Rand. Yeah. Someone who, like, I like. Someone who can be guided by me. Yeah, is my friend. Okay. My friend. Okay. And then I was like, Maureen doesn't want that. You're wrong. You're wrong. Uh, I don't think it's Maureen anymore. (laughs) Okay, that's good to know. Yeah. So you're accepting that she's gone. Uh, gone for now. I've already accepted that. Forever. She's gone. No. She's gone. No, she is. Well, she, yeah, she's gone. Yeah. But she's not. You're right. No, her dead. spirit still lives on within us. Like, I get, <laughs> I totally get that. The memory remains. I am totally no, no, 100% no. on board with that. All right. Okay. You know that I'm not. <laughs> That's this what isn't you meant. one for That's me that I'm ever. It, we're going to get to the end of the book series. And if she hasn't come back, that's when I will accept that she's dead. Last chapter, 
boom, she's like, yo, what's up? Seriously. Okay. It could happen. Like, I will maintain that Maureen is not dead <laughs> until the book okay. series ends and she doesn't come back. Oh, man. Okay. Okay. So you can probably just drop it now. <laughs> okay. Never. Okay. Let's continue with that. Because okay. that, it sounds like that's what the decision, logically, that's what makes sense yes. at this point. Okay. And then yeah. the conversation gets like cut off when they get closer to the women. Yes. So Swan and Liana are keeping up their little act. It's of working. Like it's working being really mad well. at each other. Yeah. Yeah. And they keep getting like threatened to be sent to the mistress of novices, but it sounds like that this hasn't been like threatened so many times. Yes. So I have a point to, to, kind of mention here these too. These are basically viewed as a couple of girls who are squabbling and they just like can't believe it. They're like, you used to work together. Come yeah. on. Be yeah. civil. Like, it's crazy how well that this is actually seeming to work. Yeah. They're and keeping it up too. And it so, seems like... like so over the top at this point <laughs> it's so, that it's so dumb. It's so bad. Yeah. It's good. It's good. All right. So then we get a mention about why Morel is super angry. Yeah, we do. But pause mm-hmm. because that whole Morel business. Yeah. Did you notice the thing? About how she's angry. Well, like she's picking on Nynaeve specifically. Before that. Or like that too. But that's important. But like the little little hint. Okay. Uh-uh. So Elaine notices because you know how the Aes Sedai are all like everything's flashing and their clothes and all that stuff. Yeah. So Elaine notices that Morel has a peculiar necklace on that's supporting three small daggers. Okay. And then a fourth dagger appears and is gone so quickly she thinks she might have just imagined it. Oh, and we already know she currently has three warders. Okay. So what does that mean? Well, it's Lan. Where's Lan? Where is Lan? It's been a month and a half since Egwene was injured. Yeah. When Lan left. How long does it take to get from where they were? Kyrie and Tessalad are probably a long time. Well, for Lan... Who is Lan, writing probably as fast as he can. It's probably, like, I literally thought that he was going to show up Where in the that? next chapter. Where is Lan? Yeah, Where he's coming he? up. He's, like, literally about to show up. Where is he? It's fine. It's <laughs> Teleron Rod, and she's just, that's what she's thinking of. I know, I know, I know, about. but that's, like, the ultimate question, because that's mm-hmm. whatever. That's what everybody's thinking right now. Where is he? Well, he's coming. He's coming. I thought he might show up here, these chapters. Like, not in, okay, yeah, yeah. Like, like in, Saladar. in Saladar. I'm, like, waiting on that. Okay. I think he's... Honestly, oh yeah, it's got to be close. Like, it can't way. be that. Can't be that far. He's on his way. <laughs> okay, back to why Morel is angry. Oh yeah, we it, don't know. Well, I think that she's really mostly. And so the okay, here's the thing. In these two chapters, there's a lot of very specific reference to Morel being pissed at Nynaeve. Sure. And like working her very very hard, and obviously initially Morel knows that Nynaeve is in love with Lan. Okay. I guess knowledge she has. Okay. Because if she can feel Lan and his emotions. Yeah, we don't know the dynamic there. No, and it just like is clearly that's something to do with it. Okay. I think that's pretty Okay, that's I mean that's a that's a good estimate, so all right, so the sisters are a bit on edge because since Elaine and Nynaeve first came to Saladar, they had met with Egwene and the wise ones in Teleran Riyadh. This is where we get the recap about like, oh, since Egwene was injured and then they're not allowed to go. So now it's just the Aes Sedai and the Wise Ones. That's and this explanation. And it's going bad. Yeah, very bad. Very bad. All right. So in the middle of this conversation, Jera, Gera. Yeah, Gera, Jira. Gera the cook. Gera the cook. I like that she one. She pops up, you know, in the <laughs> middle, having a dream. Yep. And the Aes Sedai are like, oh my God, did she see us? But also what's worse is they're like, oh, that's what she dreams of. We should go and punish her probably. And it's like, Come on. <laughs> you think no. she, she can, you guys yeah. can't control yourselves here. Like why do you think that she can control They can what totally she control themselves here. They are 100% in control. Mm-hmm. But I love this because it's it's like absolutely like Nynaeve is done with this. Yeah. And that's why she's like, "Nope. She's of like, course she saw you. Yeah. Of course. She'll remember it as a dream if she remembers it at all. We've yeah. already told you this. It's a dream. A thousand <laughs> times. And if you're not remembering this, yeah. Dream world. Dream world. Yeah. It's a world where dreams are. Yeah. <laughs> Do you get it now? Yeah. Do you get it? <laughs> no. Oh my god! And then Liana tries to defect, deflect the convo. Yeah. Before things go super bad, and she's like, "Okay, listen, I think it's time to go now. Yeah, we gotta go to the tower. Yeah, I was Remember? Like, oh, that's, that's what we're supposed plan? to be doing. We're gonna go look through all the documents. So as like a giant cohort, yeah, they're just gonna travel 
together. Together now. Everyone hold hands. I don't understand. <laughs> Think of the tower. I just don't get what's happening. Don't let them go by themselves because they'll all die. Well, that's fine. I know that you think that, but that's <laughs> no, why you're I'm not allowed kidding. to be in control of the salad or rice I'm just die. kidding. But like all going at once is also terrible. Yeah. No, I mean, it's like it's not great. It's not great. All right, so now Nynaeve launches into full lecture mode just Which because... Which is funny, because Liana was trying to deflect and like, let's go to the tower, and then Nynaeve can't even stop herself. No, she's going to make things worse. Yeah. She tells the sisters that they shouldn't spend too long in Teleron Riyadh because the less real sleep they get, the more tired they'll be. Yeah, well, it's the longer you spend in Teleron Riyadh, the less real sleep you get, right? Yeah, fair, okay. Yeah. And then to be careful because you can get caught in a nightmare if you're not paying attention... They're not paying attention. Not paying attention. Nightmares, guys. Control your thoughts. Not like last time. Where a fade popped up, apparently. Because they did this all... They've been through this before. I'm like, oh, let's continue doing this? Cool. But cool that's guys. the thing is they're yeah. accepted and they're obviously stupid because they're accepted. They're so we're not going to listen children. to you. children. Stupid children who don't know things. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> now it's really time to go. Elaine yeah. tells everyone she tries to sort of smooth the situation over and she says it's time to concentrate on the White Tower and they will all shift to Tar Valen together. Yeah, let's so do it. So they shift right into a light of study, and we get a huge recap of this room and what it looks like, and you know, a light of interior decorating styles. Yeah. Liana is like, I'm gonna leave. Yeah, and she does. And then she does. She does. And then they're like, Nynaeve, go after her. Yeah. And Nynaeve's like, uh, no, that's not how this works. They don't want to be around Nynaeve because she just like extra lectured them. Yeah. That dynamic is bad. Yeah. Liana doesn't want to be here. She's got her own network of eyes and ears that she wants to check in on. Because mm -hmm. she did the whole like in Tar Valen stuff. Mm -hmm. Right. And then one thing that I have to actually like call out Elaine on. Because she thinks. Because she's pissed off. Because Elida is doing the whole rose thing. Where she's using the power to make the flowers grow. Oh yeah. Like the garden. Yeah. In, uh, but world. Elaine specifically thinks that Elida is wasting the power is on making the flowers grow in like her study is that is the power something that can be wasted no that's the thing yeah. like i disagree from everything we've ever heard it's not like there's a limited amount of the power to use it's and like that if when you're somebody using is like flowers. well you know when your parents are like turn off the lights you're wasting electricity and so i'm not wasting it it's just it yeah. costs you money <laughs> that's different yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> like, yeah but i mean like yeah it's yeah exactly yeah, yeah. okay Anyway, so Nynaeve has to go off, mm -hmm. even though she's going to have, like, no way to find her. Yeah, she can't. She can't find her, and she's gone, and whatever. Yeah. And then, you know, Nynaeve does try to argue, but Morel specifically scolds her. Yeah. And so, like, that was just another note about that. Yeah. Now, it's time to see what everybody can learn, but first, very convenient to the plot here. But wait. A is it convenient? Yeah, it is. Okay. Very much so, especially dream. like dream world. Now, Elida pops in <laughs> and says, "As I have foretold, the White Tower will be reunited under me. Under me, kneel and ask for forgiveness for your sins." And then she disappears. Okay. Well, this happened before. <laughs> this happened before with Elaine. Yeah. Where Elida popped up and was like, "I'm Emily now, bitch," or something. Sure. And then. Elaine was like, well, that's weird. Yeah. Elida's not Amarlin. And then she like went on with her yeah. life. But So how do we feel about this? Like, I Elaine get that you don't Elaine. like. I don't remember who it actually yeah. was. But... I get that you don't like that she popped in right now. But I mean, she. It's convenient. She seems to maybe have a closer connection because she does pop in more frequently than any other people we've it's really seen. It's possible. But in this exact moment. Okay. But what do you think? Specifically convenient to the plot. Let's, let's jump over that hurdle. How do you feel about what she said? fine foretelling is it a foretelling is she like is that real because if it is a foretelling and the one tower or the, the one tower the white tower will be reunited under her like that's a big thing or is this just like her in a dream i think it's her in a dream so not a foretelling no i think what's important to pick up here is if the other i said i didn't know that she had the foretelling abilities sure then they might pick up on the fact that she does have foretellings period oh okay okay no, I, mean, I don't know yeah. if that's like secret or not. No, it's not. It's pretty common knowledge from what we know. Mm. Okay. It's like a thing that we know. The that thing that they, they picked know. up on is that she's wearing a stole that doesn't have a blue stripe. That's the also that's also the big we've heard about that before. But they the blue sisters saw that. Yeah. So that's and they're like, a, like mm. okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right, so now it's time to actually go search through the documents, and we get a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of this. Okay. Three of them go to look at the Amerlin's desk, and three of them go to look at the Keeper's desk. Nice. Alviar and the Black Aja sister, just so you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, so here we go. I got the I got the list. Can okay. we do this? Sure. I just got to preface this. We got to talk a little bit about what this might mean. It's important. Okay, sure. Cool? Yeah, okay. yeah, of course. It's just like we got we to gotta learn the names and the rulers and the nations, and we got to get the extra stuff. We might have to reference the map and all that. Okay, before okay? we get into all that, I do have to mention that Elaine is not allowed no, to yeah. get involved, <laughs> yeah. and neither is Swan, yep. and they both just like literally pull up a stool made of the power. But not like too comfortable of a stool. Because, because then they'll get scolded. Yeah. Okay, well, it's garbage in any case. Okay, so we got a report from Danell which is one of the Browns who helped depose Swan. I do have to say, in the audiobook, they pronounce it not Danell. What do they say? De- Danella or Danella? something. It's like completely different, and I hate that. I don't it's like it. It's like kind of like Daniel. More, uh, yeah, no, no, I like that. Da- I like Danelle much Danelle, better. okay. That's yeah. how I've always said it. I don't know. Yeah. Okay, so anyways, a report from her that says Matt and Stepaneos accepts something wholeheartedly which is important. Matt and Stepaneos is the king of Ilion. Okay. So if he's accepting but apparently something... apparently he doesn't even like really matter. Well, it's the king and the council of nine, but who's in control of Ilion? Samuel. Samuel. So if Matt and Stepaneos is saying, yeah, I agree wholeheartedly. Is Samuel agreeing wholeheartedly? Probably. Okay. Like, let's be real here. Is Samuel not in control of something no, in Ilion? No, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. So that that's just something to like, keep in mind there. And then we've got Rordran is still trying to play every side. And then Aliandra and Tylan want more time to consider their answers. Mm-hmm. So that is Mirandi, that is Gildan, and that's Altara. So looking at the map, it's these guys right in the middle here. Well, these yep. ones that we don't always pay attention to. Right. Okay. And then we've got an arrest warrant for Moraine that's still in force. So I guess they don't know that she's gone. Mm-hmm. Slash dead. Mm-hmm. Slash mm-hmm. missing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Elida still wants to build a palace. Yes, yeah, she does. We're excited about that one. Of course. And then this is really big news. Shamarin has run away and she is now an accepted. And that's because that deal. was the one who was demoted. That's the yellow sister who was demoted because Elena Nynaeve told the Saladar Aes Sedai that she was going to be demoted. And then they didn't believe Nynaeve and Elaine because they're like, that's not possible. But here we are. She's demoted. She's an accepted and she ran away. Okay. Big news. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, we have some more news, too. These are the ones that I wrote down. Okay. That I thought were of note. So the Borderlands are still fighting each other, and the Blight is quiet. Okay. Good to know. Terabon is silent, and Eridomen has confused reports. Right. So, like, not much going on on that front. Yeah. So the West is still, like, just kind of chaos. Yeah. And then we have an army in the West of Andor being raised under the flag <laughs> of Manetherin. <laughs> That's a good one. I love that I one. I like that one. Yeah. That's funny. And then Elaine tries to stop thinking about her mother. Yeah. Because of all the, like, Andoran reports and stuff and, like, where Morgays might be and if she's actually dead. There's lots of speculation. Totally. And then Elaine's name gets mentioned. It does. So the note is for Elaine Tracan to be located and return to the White Tower at all costs. Any bungling of things and people will, quote, envy the Mucura woman. Yeah, so that was the lady who tried to, like, drug uh, Nynaeve and Elaine with fork root. Yeah, because they had sent... She had sent the message that yeah, we, I got she them. had them and then they escaped. <laughs> she did not have them. So, mm-hmm, okay. Mm-hmm. So something bad happened to her. So, you know. Well. Deserved it. I, I, I don't know. Like, do we feel bad for her? I don't know. Not too much. Yeah. Because she was willing to just like drug people and ship them off. Yeah. I'm just going to go on record. Hard stance. Don't drug people and ship them off places. Don't do it. When you don't even know. Even if even know. like people tell you to. Even if your boss tells you to, don't do it. <laughs> Be like, I'm not going to do that. Oh I'm going to find a new job. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now they also find Elida's response to Rand's amnesty, <laughs> which is so funny because it's basically her just like crumpling up the paper and yeah. trying to rip it apart. And then just like, not. like no, I shouldn't rip. I shouldn't rip this one. Yeah. Up. <laughs> Plus, Elida is close to declaring that any Aes Sedai not returning to the tower will be declared 
traders. Yeah, that's a big deal. Huge. Huge deal because like the official trader status. Because then it would basically be like announcing to the world that the tower is split. Yes. So we also get a couple more important pieces of information. So we do hear that Elida is ranting about the whole the ruling house of Andor is the key. And then Elaine's thinking the key to what? What does that mean? We know what that means. To the whole Winning the last the battle. Yeah. yeah, winning the last battle, the ruling house or the, you know, Andorran house is in, critical. Right. That's the big message. But is that actually Morghese's right. line? Yeah, then we find something interesting out. Elida has sent emissaries to Rand in Kyrian. Yes. That's what we get. Yeah, and, confirmation. you know, we're not quite sure when that happened, but Elida means to offer him support and an escort to the tower. And Elaine's had just, like, enough of this. Yeah. Because even if, you know, Elida then does find out that it's in Camelin, it does seem like the Saladar I said I are going to get to Ran first. We're hoping. We're not sure. I mean, sure. but maybe. We have no idea because Ran jumps back and forth so often. It doesn't matter. He actually like, we might have no be idea. in Camelin yeah. or in Kyrian. When it can sh- be anywhere. We've seen him pop in and out, zip yeah, zapping around. Flits around. Yeah. Yeah. So... Anyway. Okay, okay. Now prediction time. Boom. Go. Okay, what? Who's who's getting Saladar. ran first? Saladar. I said I. Really? Mm-hmm. Saladar get like first taste. It's just like boom, yeah. there you go. They mm-hmm. get to pitch him first. I think so. It's like Dragon's Den style. Like, ooh, this is this is our this is our pitch for you. Brad. Join with us because this is what our business model is. Yeah. And then he's like, ah, maybe. For anybody <laughs> who doesn't know what Dragon's Den is, it's Shark Tank. Yeah, anyone who doesn't know what Shark Tank is, I don't know. You can... Sorry, look it up. Yeah, uh, rich people investors. listen to investors. Yeah, yeah. investors. Give money to people who don't have money. That's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, in Canada and the UK, it's Dragon's Den. Okay. And in the States, it's Shark Tank. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. You didn't know that? Yeah, I didn't know did. ours was Dragon's Den. Yeah. I thought Shark Tank was, because like usually the US gets cooler names for things. Oh, no, Shark Tank is cool. Dragon Stand is way cooler than Shark Tank. I mean, <laughs> I mean, that's not even a competition. Oh my god, it's literally Dragon's Den. <gasps> it's Dragon's Den. It's Dragon Den. Oh my god, he's gonna do Dragon Den. Okay, that's fantastic. He's literally okay. the dragon. Why should I invest in your eyes to die, Oh my Saladar? god, that's so funny. Oh man, okay, that's got to be printed on a T-shirt or something. I that's don't even know. hilarious. What do we even do with that? That's so good. TM, TM, trademark that, <laughs> trademark it. Okay, done. Oh my god, that's so funny. Oh, uh, okay. Anyways, did you yeah. answer? I was caught no. up in this. Uh, yes, yeah, Saladar. Saladar is getting for his first Yeah, yeah. You really aren't listening to me. No, today. not at all. It's 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 fine. It's fine. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> all right. So this is where Elaine is very upset. And she says, how can you think Rand would listen to anything Elida says? Of course he knows that she's a red and what that means. They aren't going to offer him support. We have to warn him. Yeah. Also, we have to warn Egwene because if these tower Aes Sedai's are showing up in Kyrian and yeah. she's there, yeah. like pretending to be an Aes Sedai. Shoot. You know, but she's around Aiel. She's more pretending that she's Aiel than she is pretending that she's Aes Sedai. I know, but she's still going to get in trouble because she's technically like a runaway accepted at this point for them. That's fair too. Yeah. And she didn't come back to the tower when everyone was supposed to come back to the tower. There's a whole lot of reasons why she's in trouble. <laughs> Egwene should be She's notified. a friend of Moraine. Absolutely. It's like, okay. Yeah. So now in the middle of this outburst, they're all distracted by screaming coming from the outside of the study. Oh, no. Oh what my could God. have happened? I I'm can't so surprised. Believe something went wrong. Amazing. If it isn't the consequences <laughs> of my own actions. How many times am I going to say that? You this... can keep saying it because it's still true. As it's... long as it's true, then you can say it. So bad. Yeah. Gosh. Okay. I've tried absolutely so... nothing and I'm all out of ideas. Yeah. It's like literally there's a nightmare scene. Yeah. And I have to tell you, though... <laughs> I, I didn't even know how much you wanted to talk about this. Cause... Oh, not much. But I do have to tell you what I initially thought. Sure. Because Elaine keeps going on, this isn't real, this isn't real, whatever. Yeah. The scene is a bunch of Trollocs yeah. are here. And I mean, it is very, like, dream world-esque where all of a sudden they're, like, just being hoisted up over cook pods. Sure. And it's clearly a nightmare. Some are too big and some are, like, half-formed. It's right. Like the distance matters. It's weird. part of me thought 
that maybe it is real. It's real. Ooh, dream world attack. Yeah, because cool. clearly the Forsaken easily can just open a gateway. Yeah, and real world go into right, and so maybe they were attacking. But can they? I don't know. Well, uh, yeah. Yeah, we don't. Know. <laughs> yeah, they can. Okay. I don't know what. <laughs> I don't know. We get this. We've seen a lot of very yeah. concrete evidence that yes, they can. Okay. That Rand's well, not the only one who can do that. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah no. But I was, I'm, I'm just saying, like, because the end, the end sequence here with Demon Dread, yeah, it's like what, it, what did actually happen? Oh no, no, what, is it this coincidence? is a nightmare? No, okay. no, 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 no. Okay. No, no, no. This is a hundred percent a nightmare. Okay, okay. What Elaine? Was I wasn't thinking. sure if like that's where you were going with no, that. No, I was just saying that what I was thinking while I was reading. Okay. Fair, fair. We talk about that sometimes. Sometimes on this podcast (laughs) oh my gosh okay so anyway i thought for a moment like maybe this was real yeah but then it turns out it is not not. elaine is yelling at them it's a nightmare they're not listening which is pretty obvious like we have to link let's link together and we'll defeat the shadow spawn yeah it's like no sherry that's not what you have to do against the nightmare (laughs) you're supposed to pretend like it doesn't exist yeah Think about how the corridor as it normally is. is. Uh, what is the um, Wizard of Oz? There's no, no place, place like, like home. home. There's no place. That's what I kept thinking the whole time. Oh. It's like, oh, you know. Like do that's that what thing. Sherry doing or that's what you should do? That's what you should do. It's like, oh, it's just a dream. It's just a dream. Think of the corridor. Think of the corridor. Okay. Yeah. Got it's it. like that style. Okay. All right. Yeah. So it's not real. Swan and Elaine do have to help them and yeah. step into the nightmare. And Swan's like, ooh, Elaine's courageous because she goes charging in. And it's like, at one point, she like, there's a sword in Elaine's hand or something. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> it's super random. I mean, that's cool. Like, go, yeah. Let's go with it. You know, this is like something that she does well here. She does. She stays calm under pressure. She saves everybody. Keep in mind. I was really actually not hoping that's a bad word, but I kind of thought one of these Aes Sedai t- <laughs> would die here. Yeah, of course you're hoping that. Well, I just want them... Learn a lot. Le- I want you to learn the ultimate lesson. And if it was one that I don't know or care about. <laughs> Morvrin. Right? <laughs> okay. I, they're just annoying me so much. No, I get that. Or I get at that. least like Dobby only wanted to maim or seriously yeah. injure. <laughs> I get what you're saying because the biggest issue is it doesn't seem like these Aes Sedai have learned any lessons at all. No. It's like when you you come out of this bad situation, it's like, hey, what did you learn? And then you're like. Nothing. I didn't nothing. learn anything. We can just heal ourselves. It's, it's like, fine. no, that's not the lesson. The lesson isn't nothing. The, the, le- the lesson is something. Yes. So I understand that feeling. Okay. Uh, I just said a Harry Potter reference. Did you hear it? Dobby. Dobby. Something with Dobby. I only wanted to maim or seriously, seriously injure injured. you. Yeah. That's that's. He pretty, never meant to kill anybody. Yeah. He didn't. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's how I feel. I don't want them dead. I just want them to like, this is all their own fault. Yeah. And so I wanted there to be like some consequence. Like here. lose an arm, lose it like a something, lose a finger at least. Like, come on. Yeah. Okay. okay. I'll go. All right. All right. So, shots. Yeah. Back with it. Back with it. Make these chapters a little more interesting. <laughs> Cheers. We're, we're, we got the show coming out it's right setup. away. It's a setup. This is a lot. This there's book a... is great. No, no, no. I know. I get that these chapters are like a little bit dull, but it's like whatever. It's gonna... There's always. I look at my little. It's gonna heat up. Shot glass has a little mug Love handle it. on it from Georgia, and yours yeah. is Georgia too. Cool. Cheers. Cheers. <coughs> I was way more full than I thought it was. It's deceptive. It's like a little. You little know, guy. because the shot glass is not see through. I can't see. <clears throat> <coughs> okay you okay no yes okay here we go let's finish this chapter then we'll go to the next one and then we'll be done that's how this works yeah i'm ready i'm excited so elaine essentially saves everyone yeah she like, runs in gets she runs in, in tells them, them to stop thinking that it's a nightmare it all works done done now nobody is seriously injured or dead yeah they all just need some healing yeah um, Elaine did take a knife to the neck and is bleeding from her neck. Just a little just a bit. Little just prick. like a little, 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 it's like almost, almost like a. Almost, but she doesn't want anyone to like see that and think yeah. that she needs like anything serious. So they all leave. 
Teleran Riyadh and Elaine knows that she has like a few minutes before anyone's going to be coming to her room to check on her. Yeah, because Swan decided to stay, but Elaine tried to stay, but they were like, nope, you got to go back. Right. What's Swan doing? She is going to go check on stuff. It is very not clear what she's doing. I'm just like confused because why, number one, like how good is Swan and Teleran Riyadh that she can just wander around here alone? Sure. And number two... Like, so, is she just looking through documents still? She might be. She might be just, like, looking at stuff. But keep in mind, Swan and Liana have, like, different privileges because they are not Aes Sedai. Yeah. But, right? Yeah. Nynaeve and Elaine are accepted and are in the circle of Aes Sedai. And Swan and Liana are no longer that. They can't really be told what to do. Well, they can be told what to do. But the Aes Sedai don't care because they look down on anyone who can't channel. And they're just women who can't channel. And it's just like, I don't care what you do, basically. It's yeah. Like, go do whatever. Okay, anyway, so. so Swan's gone off to do something. Elaine is going to flit off to the palace. Yeah, Camelin. Camelin Palace. The Here Camelin we go. Palace. Because, you know, there was some reports about Rand tossing away her mother's throne in okay. place of his own. So misunderstood. So misunderstood. I, I know. feel bad for Rand because he got the short end of the stick on this one. That is not what he did. Yeah. And so she immediately sees a difference in this throne room. Because on the dais at the end of the hall where the lion throne should be, there's a big old fancy dragon throne. Uh, ah, yeah. And the lion throne has been removed and it's up on a pedestal behind and above the dragon throne. Yeah. And Elaine walks up to it and says out loud, what are you doing, Randall Thor? What do you think you're doing? And for a moment, I had a little actually bit of hope that Rand would show up. (gasps) In Teleran Rand? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I just thought that would make That's this... That's like never... I thought that would make this very interesting. It's never happened. I know. Ever. <laughs> it's like, why are we... Remember I was hoping for the um, Perrin pop-in at one point? Yes. Like, that would have been like, super cool. Our characters, other than the Egwene and Nynaeve Elaine meetups... We need all more... Of our, we need a little bit crossover more events, like, I get it. hey, yeah. no, let's I get it. meet up and see each other although realistically if ron did show up here i would have been excited and then three seconds later i would have been disappointed because it would have all been very misunderstanding they probably would have yelled at each other or or no that's it or no it would have been really annoying it wouldn't have been good or no dream doing it no that's that'd be cool (laughs) I'm down with. Well, it. here's a question. I'm here's cool a hypothetical. With that. I'm going to put cool a hi- with it, but no, no, no. I want to give a. I'm going to put a hypothetical here, which has been like hotly debated. Ooh, what? Okay, so like hypothetically, Rand and Elaine do it in Teleran Riyadh. Sure. Can she get pregnant? Yeah. Interesting. She can die in Teleran Riyadh. So you could also get pregnant. Yeah. Really? You're just like going hundo on that. Just sure. Like, yep. Whatever happens happen. there happens in the real world. It's a reflection. There we have it, folks. That's the answer. Oh, that's not even like a. It's just like one of those things where it's like, yep. uh, well, you know, things that happen in Teleran Yard, sort of. We saw many people like get stabbed and then they come out and they're not dead. Like that's ba- that's a big thing. So Yeah, but they're still stabbed. They still have a stab wound. Yeah, but not to the extent like the injury isn't necessarily no, like a complete reflection. I think it is. But it's but it's not though. But Mostly we've seen that it's is. not. Mostly dead. You're just like sticking with it regardless. Yeah, I'm sticking with it. Whatever. You know, I because appreciate Because I mostly that. want to move on. Okay. Yeah. Now... It, back in here, sure. where Rand doesn't show up. And doesn't impregnate. <laughs> no, <laughs> and also doesn't like have a big communi- miscommunication. <laughs> right. Which is actually what would have happened. Yeah. And it would have made me more mad. Okay. Yeah. It wouldn't have been like cool. It would have been awful. So. <laughs> because it's such a misunderstanding between Elaine and Rand. Always. Like, especially of what's happening with this whole Thrawn thing, too. Mm-hmm. Like, it would just be, yeah. Yeah, because he would get defensive, and then she would go... I'm trying to protect it, or something. He and he'd be, he'd be like, ah. Like, where are you? Uh, are you what alive? Are you? <laughs> ah. Like, it wouldn't have been, like, constructive. See? Anyway. My so, solution. Elaine contemplates life for a little while about Rand and or Min, all that stuff. And she thinks about how she would even like to share him she's okay with that but she will bond him as a warder yes and says i will do what i must but then she has to go now and so she steps out of teleran riyadh and now ron's not here <laughs> but somebody else is somebody is i like this Hey-o. i like this very much you do i do you do like this this okay. was interesting i was cool. surprised I, okay, i'm a little surprised because like i don't know what you think of the forsaken uh, especially we're getting like hammered with too much information that so I can't, much forsaken stuff i can't like keep it it's all like straight. so much because we got to reintroduce the new forsaken the new kids on the block yeah all right well anyway 
Demandred steps out from behind one of the columns and his guess about this girl is that it is Elaine Tricand. Yeah. And that she's using a minor Terangriol, one made for training beginner students. Interesting. I Weird. love the perspective of Forsaken on the Terangriol yeah. because it's like they know what they are and what they were used for back in the day. And like how to make them and how they're, you know, everything yeah. probably. Did so. you ever do the project in like school where you had to take something from everyday life and then pretend you were someone like a thousand years in the future and no, be like, never. pretend you're an anthropologist and what was this used for? So it's like, no, never. it's a funny experiment because yeah. like how wrong can you get it? Yeah. So... That's but anyways, funny. yeah, yeah. That's just what kind of I always think about with the Terangriel and stuff. And then the Forsaken Tree up being yeah. like, wrong. Well, especially with the whole Othrod thing we learned last chapter. Yeah. Like, oh, wrong, yeah. not what it's used for. Right, right, right. <laughs> so. Yeah. Anyway, so he thinks about her words because she said some things out loud. And like her expressions were plain enough. She did not like what Althor was doing here. And she means to do something about it. Yeah. And then he says, let the Lord of Chaos rule. Yes. And opens the gateway and leaves Teleranrion. Interesting. So, and he thinks, like d at this point, thinks that this was another thread in the tangle of threads that's yanked, however feeble the pull turned out to be. So the question is, like, was this whole dragon throne thing, was it actually like a forsaken uh, coordinated event? Of like, ooh, let's get a big old dragon throne to make him piss off the rulers of Andor. I doubt it's it. It's like the little dabbling and all that. Maybe. Because Rand never asked for the throne. No. He asked for like a chair and then they were like, oh, we'll get you this big old fancy chair. And it seems like it definitely got upgraded. Because that happened again. That happened in like Kyrian, right? Too? Yeah, it happened in Kyrian. It's like it kind of seems like that was the, the That's thing. That's not something I really need to spend any mind power thinking about. Interesting. Okay, fine. Yep. Okay. Moving on. Chapter 8. Let the Lord of Chaos rule. I love that. I actually do like that okay. very much. Who's the Lord of Chaos? I don't know. Someone who likes... Is it a person or is it like a metaphor? It sounded metaphorical for this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if we get the vibe of the entire book so far, is like the entire West Shit's Coast happening. is in chaos. So it's like, Shit's ooh, let on. chaos rule. Just like let's throw the world and just like <laughs> whatever you can fuck up, just yeah. like go do it. All right. So chapter eight is called The Storm Gathers, except yes. like only sort of because metaphorical no storm, storm sh- shows the metaphorical up. storm yeah now the chapter symbol is the adam yeah. which we know we've only gotten a few times <laughs> oh we do know that <laughs> now we enter in a naive perspective and she's waking up the next day after the night in Teleran Riyadh, and this whole chapter is a whole lot of being in Nynaeve's head, which I have to tell you, I don't love because it's, it's the, the same as being in my own head. That's what I terrible. said at the beginning of this. Yeah, but like actually this oh, time. No. Like, what does that mean? <laughs> like I'm actually Nynaeve and it's yeah. not great. Yeah. <laughs> not in a good way. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. All right, so everything's kind of like a scrambled mess, and she starts off by thinking about how she used to rely on her, like, listening to the wind ability, and it seems like there's a storm coming in, and that's not happening. Yeah, that's what I was saying, like, metaphorical, because we get the whole, like, ooh, storm's coming in. It's like, ooh, storm is over top of here, and at the end, we're kind of, like, given a huge event that is happening currently. So is it a metaphorical storm gathering? Well, here's the thing, though. When, I don't remember what book... I have the world even maybe when she was like a storm's coming and I don't think this has to do with the weather. Yeah. Like she was receptive to the fact that she could sense things when it wasn't weather related. And this seems to her like it is and maybe specifically it's... weather related and it's specifically yeah. like the weather's effed up. And so. Well, there's also that aspect of it's like, which aspect is it? Is it like the yeah. weather is totally off? Yeah. It's rock or, or is it metaphorical? Mm-hmm. So. All right. Okay. All right. Anyway, plus Morel has been badgering her a lot lately. Yeah. Also, she was run- wandering around Tarvalon and the streets are filled with garbage. Oh, right. Elida's doing a bad oh, job. Oh, right. Because she couldn't find Liana. Yeah. She like and... saw her when it was like she knew that she couldn't find her. And it's like everybody knew, but she had to just go and wander around. And she ended around. up staying like way later than even like yeah. Elaine. <laughs> so... Yeah. Yeah. And so Nynaeve thinks about how she warned the Aes Sedai to be careful and this wasn't the first time that they got themselves into trouble because Elaine had just filled her in on the details after she got back from Telegram. Yeah, and this is where Elaine says, like, maybe they learned some humility. Nope. 
they learn no lessons. No, thank you. I say not today to the lessons. That's what the I said I say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I will all right. not be learning so, uh, Nynaeve and Elaine talk about sort of all the events that are going on. And Nynaeve says, I thought I saw Rand yes. in Teleranriad Tarvalin. Yes, but in not, front of the tower. not Camelot. And that's also, I was asking, yeah. like, ooh, okay, so what? what I, expo- she go. said, I thought <laughs> I saw a glimpse of him or maybe someone who looked a lot like him. Yeah. Only for a moment in the square in front of the tower. And Elaine goes on a rant about how Ran needs her. And she can't be with him. Okay, but more importantly, did she see Rand? Yeah, probably. He's flitting around everywhere. I don't know. In Teleron? Or was it somebody else? It was like, someone else. Remember when we got back in the Shadow Rising? I, I think feel it was like Shadow this Rising. is uh, like not as big as a deal as you think it is. No, but I got I got to bring it up because there's the whole thing where, uh, what was it? Was it Nynaeve who popped up and was like, oh my God, it's Lan. And of course, it's not Lan. No, so it looked like Lan. Yeah. Uh... Right. You know, but then it was very quickly like, okay, not Lan, someone who looks like Lan, someone who could be Lan's like brother or something. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it was Rand. I think he's flitting. Okay, okay. I think so he's you're flitting not around. making a big deal. No. It's like some things you really latch on to and you make yes. a huge deal of. And it's like this, you're just like totally willing to pass on. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> yep. I just don't understand you it. what's the, like the why, I don't understand the why Maybe behind that. Maybe I'm the Lord of Chaos. Ah, you're like... <laughs> Not important. Ah. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Okay. I don't know. He's, like, flitting around everywhere, and he's, like, concerned about what Elida and them are doing. So maybe he just, like, stopped in to see it for a minute. Totes. I get it. Okay. I don't know. I Let's... don't have... No, it's fine. Let's continue. Let's continue. Okay. It's good. <laughs> All right. So the women sit down so that Elaine can fill Nynaeve in on what happened last night from like looking at all the documents and it's basically the same speculation that we've already all covered and then Elaine has to go because she is teaching her first novice class yeah Nynaeve is not allowed to teach novice no because she has a <laughs> she's got a block a block she can't do that yeah she barely even knows herself yeah. how is she supposed to teach anybody exactly there yeah. we go yeah. All right, so Nynaeve heads off to find Mogedian. Yeah. And she finds her in the middle of doing laundry with the other servants. Yeah. And the woman who's in charge says that she is short-staffed and Nynaeve is not allowed to have Mogedian right now. So there we go. Merrigan, right? Merrigan, yes. That yeah. is the one. Yep. So Nynaeve's like, sorry, see yeah. ya. This chapter is tough because it is really just a scramble of being in Nynaeve's head. And like, and, and she's kind of like left to her own devices and just like doesn't really like love that. Yeah. Because she would like to have some purpose that she like doesn't have any purpose. She has zero direction right now. And that is like, if you want to feel how Nynaeve feels in this chapter, read the trap chapter and that is how she feels. Yeah. She has no direction. She doesn't know what she's doing. She's she trying to figure wastes, out how to like leave. She wastes half a day and it's like oh i wasted half a day wasted it's like yeah because you were wandering around the town With doing like, nothing although for i half feel a like day. she did come across some interesting information she's accomplished zero things well she thinks that it's like if you want to just accomplish nothing just go like chill out in your no, bedroom no she doesn't want to accomplish nothing she wants to accomplish she wants to be productive but she's not like doing things to do that she's trying to so it's like just like not really hard working. sort of yeah yeah i get it i actually do completely understand her yeah and i uh i feel it a little bit yeah yeah okay let's get to the good bit of this chapter okay yeah so she goes to find some breakfast and thinks about how maybe morel <laughs> has taken something against her personally she ends up getting some food she's pretty much killing time she doesn't want to do chores so <laughs> i hate copying i don't want to copy uh, yeah that's like the chore of so she wanders around into. thinks about lan nobody has heard from him or seen from him, seen from him seen <laughs> him and she's a bit ashamed that when she heard the news about moraine her first thought was joy that lan can be hers yes sort of no nope. not really no nope. no nope. no i have a theory though i haven't i'm gonna get to it okay at the I'll end oh wait. Wait. at the end i have a theory okay so then Nynaeve spots Meryl, so she ducks into a building. Ooh. Now, this is the good stuff. Yeah, there's no reason for her to be looking for Nynaeve, too. So it's like... 
Well, except it kind of seems like she really does have something out for her. Really? Yeah, and I'm going to talk to the theory. Okay, okay, okay. I'll let you get to it. Anyway, so this is the exciting stuff I actually want to talk about. Yeah. Loghain is inside this building. Yeah. Under the watch of an Aes Sedai, but there's also two men and a woman here. These powerful Altaran nobles from Alt. Tara. Altara, yeah. So again, one of the middle three that we typically forget about, Altara, Gildan, and Mirandi, these three. Yeah. Those three are often forgotten. These three are like mishmashy, and they're typically a little chaotic. Do we have a city that we know from Altara or no? Does it uh, matter? It's not, not important right now. All right. The impor- we do get some information about Altara, though. We do get information. The, the important part, too, is who this woman is. Lelaine. Oh, the Aes Sedai, you mean? Yeah, the Aes Sedai, Lelaine. Okay, yeah. Lelaine is a blue sister, and she's one of the three sitters for the blue Aja. And since all the blues were kicked out of Tarval, and she's like one of the actual sitters. Oh, okay. Lelaine is actually like a really big, important deal. Okay, cool. Yeah. So now we also get that Loghain right now is looking very proud and confident, which I liked. Yeah. The big deal is Loghain is here to tell these nobles a story about how... Six red sisters found him a year before he proclaimed himself, and they gave him a choice of death or taking their offer. And so, obviously, he took their offer. Yeah. Which was to proclaim himself as a dragon, and then they were to pull him down. Exactly. Which, like, maybe asterisk on that last part of it, though. Mm Mm-hmm. Because they didn't, like, outright say what the plan was, necessarily. Mm -hmm. And he thinks... Looking back, it kind of makes sense because there's no glory in pulling down a man who can just channel because, like, they pop up for everyone. But if it's, like, a false dragon, that's a big deal. Yeah, so. and then he says the Red Aja never played him until the very end when they betrayed him. Yes, but they were literally, from what Loghain's story is, they were literally, like, passing him messages, being like, this is where Aes Sedai are going to be. This is where the armies are going to be. This is where you should be in attack and all that. So it's like mm-hmm. they're giving him really important intel. Right. So and now one of the Altaran lords asks Lelaine, yep, is that what you Lelaine. Said? um about Loghain's followers because most just escaped or melted away, and she says they won't be a problem because Loghain doesn't have any more desire for glory. That yep. glory word, glory. Okay, it's a big one. I don't know. I just always I know you're super attached to it. Yeah. Only to make restitution for what he did. Plus, he's been gentled, so they won't have any reason to follow him. And now, here's the thing about this story Logan is telling. Okay. Because Swan came in, knowing she could lie. Yep. And told this story. And then, specifically, she was like, I have to talk to Logan before any other sisters do. Yeah. I do think that some of this story is true. Interesting. Okay, I was going to say, because the the important, you like nailed it right on about like, what is the truth behind this? Lelaine says specifically, and we know Lelaine can't lie. Someone told me who can't lie. This is true. She says, it was confirmed to me by one who cannot lie. He speaks true. Yeah. But is that her talking about Swan? Because Swan can lie, but they don't know that she she can't can't. lie. So in her mind, it would be true saying that like, this is true because it was confirmed. Yeah. So it's like, we know I said I can tell lies if, if they, they think, think it's, it's true. true. Yeah. So is this whole story just made up or like no. what, what degree? Of no, the story? I think that for sure Red Sisters, oh, although it, as I say it, I just can't believe a Red Sister would be cool with working with a man who can channel. Yeah. That part is the part that I just like have trouble with conspiracy theory i do think that there are some maybe like black aja red sisters who would be like more cool with it we do get names javindra barasine and elida yeah so i don't know those well i know elida but yeah um yeah we don't know the the other ones mm -mm. so i like for me a real good story a real good lie comes from the truth right that's that's what we know i told you that no well i'm that's just like I know you have said that before. I have said that. But I don't know. I'm pretty sure I was the first person who ever said that. Yeah. No. Yeah. No, no, no. So I wouldn't be surprised if this was completely false. Okay. But I also wouldn't be surprised if there's some truth in there. Does it help that Ishamael 
used no, to say because apparently he was crazy yeah okay and because he said the, the same stuff like lies. "Ooh, the ice and i are using all the false dragons and it's like you're next yeah because <laughs> he did that whole he thing did too. say all that he said all those like, things that's probably what's clouding my judgment into thinking that it's real quite mm-hmm. honestly it's tough unreliable it's tough to narrators yeah, yeah, yeah okay yeah, yeah, anyway yeah. so lalani notices nynaeve and says lalane lalane lalani lalani it's lalane right <laughs> i don't know I feel like it should be Lelaine. Okay. If it's Lelani, I'm not saying that. I'm not on board with that at all. <laughs> That's just like the real life name I know. I don't know a Lelaine. It's like Elaine, but with a L. Lee Lane. <laughs> oh, Lelaine. Lelaine. Oh, yeah. Okay. I can right? see that. Yeah, okay. yeah. You're right. Okay. So, <laughs> anyway, she's like, I have this cup. I uh, need to get rid of this cup. <laughs> like the end. So she leaves. And now Swan is here with Gareth Brynn. They're having the strangest conversation I've ever seen. Yeah. It's it's so super weird. He's like into her, but then is like mad at her. And she's like just strictly mad. It's a back and forth. <laughs> I don't know. It's, okay. Is there something there? Is it, it, It's whatever. It's a Looks like argument. a love connection to me. <laughs> <laughs> that was that joke that I don't understand, but I totally know this is the place to do it. So. Yeah. I know. Oh, I man. know. Okay. It's so funny. Anyway, <laughs> so that's a mess. And then Bryn leaves. <laughs> Nynaeve asks Swan what that was all about. And she's like, none ya business. Get the F out of here, yeah. lady. This and chapter so, is so all over the place. Like, holy who cares? smokes. cares? What? Like, this is just a. <laughs> I'm gosh. laughing too hard. My cheeks hurt now. I know. <laughs> I'm just trying to find where we are. Like, what's going on? It, like, doesn't matter. Okay, so Swan That's Liana, the kind of thing or, I say, and then you get mad when I say it. Yeah, Bryn leaves. Nynaeve's like, what's up, Swan? Swan's like, nah. Get out of here. And then Liana here. shows up. Yeah. And then Swan and Liana have a pretend fight. Pretend fight. Because the important part there is that Swan isn't going to be meeting with the Wise Ones tonight. Mm. And that's when Lelaine comes up to Nynaeve, and then Swan and Liana are like, ah, I hate you. Uh, and, and then, then they, they storm leave. off. Yeah, so now it's just... Lelaine and Nynaeve. Okay. That's where we are. Yeah. And she wants to know why Nynaeve came in during the showing of Logan. Yeah, what was that weird thing that happened? And she's like, it was an accident. <laughs> I thought the room would be empty. <laughs> and then Lelaine is like, what do you know about Randall Thor? Yeah. And uh, nothing. No. I don't know anything. I don't know what he's going to do. I don't know anything. <laughs> Yeah, nothing. so I love it because, again, Nynaeve comes back to the whole Mama Bear thing where it's like she ain't saying nothing to these Aes Sedai about Randall Thor. And also she has no idea what Rand would do. She, like, legitimately actually hasn't seen him in a year yeah. and a half. I mean, that too. Yeah. Also, they want to know where Egwene is. Oh, because yeah. Because they don't know where Egwene is, which is interesting. Because they've been meeting with the Aes Sedai, or the Wise the Ones, The Wise sorry. Ones. But clearly that has not been, like, a topic of, like, what's going on. They might not know that Egwene is with the Wise Ones at all. Yeah. Why we does do, she want to know where Egwene is? We because they decided on an Amerlin and they need to tell Egwene. They got to be like, hey, okay, how, how does that work? <laughs> I don't know. I, hey. think I'm, I actually think that I'm very wrong about this. I don't have anything to follow up. <laughs> <laughs> it's like an elementary school. Do you want to be Amerlin? Yes, yes or, or no? no? <laughs> Maybe. No. Yeah. Okay. Uh, All right. So Lalani okay. asks. Nine no. Years. Oh, my God. I can't have you say Lalani. Oh, that's how I read if it. If that's how it's said in the audiobooks. I don't I'm, think that's how it's said. I don't I know. I hope not. I don't remember. I don't know. <laughs> I have to, like, listen to it again because, like, no way it's Lalani. I know. So, anyway, she asks Nynaeve if she is still hoping to heal Swan and Liana stilling. And she's like, it's a waste of time. Don't do it. Get out of here. You should probably focus on yourself and your own freaking problems. Yeah, the mental block. Yeah. Don't worry about other people. Worry about yourself. Nope. That's nope. not Nine U style. That's not anyone's style. In uh, this there's pers- nothing to fix here. Yeah, I am fine. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Leilani ends up leaving and I need heads. Oh, I said it again. <laughs> You're laughing. <laughs> That's how I see the word. I don't know. <laughs> Lelaine, that's what you say? Yeah. Okay. Lelaine ends up leaving. Nynaeve heads off, wandering around again. She doesn't know what to do. Everything's going poorly. Here we are. <laughs> so uh. she's very angry and she feels like she could channel even without Mogedian. And I think that's just like a constant theme. Yeah. Also, so we didn't really highlight this, but Nynaeve, it's going bad for her in a lot of different ways. 
but she chose yeah. to stay here because the whole she yellow wanted Aja. She to study healing. She wants to study healing with She's the yellows. She's accepted. When you're an accepted, you're allowed yeah. to like study what you care about. And it's kind of it's kind of odd because you would think that the yellows, if Nynaeve is like wanting to be a yellow. And a healer. And a healer. And she's like the most powerful Aes Sedai that's been around since like friggin' forever. Yeah. They would be a little bit invested in paying attention to her. But yeah, they're they, not. They don't like her at all. They don't want anything to do with her. And it's like she's in a weird spot where she's staying to get help from the yellows, but they don't want to talk yeah, to her. Yeah, so she's going to try to just leave. She thinks of like, es- like escaping. I don't know how that's going to go for her. Probably not well. If the ha- Do you think that she's going to try? Like actually? Yeah, I do. I you want think she's her out? to. She's out of here? I like, want her out of here. This is the literally. Give it like another day or two and it's like I'm out. This is the same situation as the fires of heaven when Nynaeve and Elaine did not have any purpose and they were wandering around with a circus they weren't really doing much it was kind of dull they were frustrated it was all bad and that's how I'm feeling for Nynaeve right now Mm -hmm. because Elaine sort of has this purpose like at least she has like some things that she's doing yeah she's like teaching classes and, and teaching classes and I mean like she is thinking about Rand I think that if Nynaeve leaves, Elaine will probably go with her or try to. She really wants to get to Rand. She's yeah, jealous. Yeah, that's true. So. That's true. And that's at the end of this, that's where Nynaeve is thinking about like, ooh, I'll just go to Rand. Yeah, because so. I don't actually even know where it is. But at some point, we get that Tom and Julian are not around anymore. Yeah, yeah. that's, uh, that's They left and she wishes that they were here so they could help her leave. Totally. We got to talk about that too. Go ahead. Yeah, okay. No, I was just looking at my notes here because, okay, so we have a whole bunch of stuff. Uno. So Nynaeve is thinking about her, like, escape Oh, yeah. This is, like, kind of the two chapters where we get a rundown of everybody who's, like, still kind of here and who showed up with them and what that's like. Yes. Because we get sort of, like, Brigitte's still here. We get that Uno and the Shinarans are still here. Uno is an officer under Gareth Brynn, and he's, like, training the heavy cavalry, but Uno would totally leave if Nynaeve commands it. Like, he is still handle on that train. Yeah. He's with the Dragon Reborn. But here's the thing. Tom and Julian are out on like a scouting mission into Amadicia. Which they left like a month ago. Yeah. And so they're like going pretty deep in. But it's just like an interesting little... We know that RJ likes to put things out there. Yeah. And if they're going to Amadicia... Yeah, we know that Morghese is there. Yeah? Yeah. And it's like one of those things like, oh, well, we know that Tom and Morghese have this huge friggin' backstory. Yeah. So is that like a, ooh, what's going to happen there? Because Morghese is also... You know, in a tough spot. Well, because she's either going to get help from the White Cloaks or a dark friend. <laughs> friggin' Pater. Friggin' Pater. Is friggin', gonna, is friggin Pater going to come through on this one? Pater. Oh, man. Okay. Or just like out of nowhere, Tom and Julian. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I didn't write it. I'm just like highlighting that, that that might be a possibility. But anyways, it's okay. going poorly. And now Nine you shows up at Elaine's class. Oh, yeah. To do some spying. Just well, do just a like, little peeping. Yeah. Just like watching. Just a little watching. Yeah. She yeah. doesn't know what she's doing. She's literally wandering around here. Yeah. Uh, we get a bit of a side note that there are tons of novices here. Yeah. Like more than in the tower. Recruiting currently. plan. They took your advice finally. Because they're like, oh man, we got... So they so Sheriam got 18 novices out of the tower after the whole split. And then since arriving in Saladar, they have been like looking. And then they sent people to go look. And they found people amazing it's crazy isn't that amazing crazy plan it's like look for people and then you find them that's what i assumed was happening in the tower it gets better when i first started this series it gets better they're going village by village yeah crazy pull them out one by one get them get them guys genius plans here gosh yeah we got some real real sharp people working at Saladar. okay so while all this is going on Nynaeve gets a visitor and it is theodrin Theodrin. Theodrin. That's a very, yeah, Lord of the Rings sounding name. Because it's Theoden? Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe you. You well, did it. I know. I wasn't going to. I stuttered. I wasn't going to. <laughs> Who's he the king of? I don't even know who it is. Just gonna, We're just going to. The place. The place where they're from. With the, with the horses. The, the place with the horses? There you go. We did it. Nailed no, it. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. No, you got it. Say Rohan. I'm not going to say things you tell me. Say I don't even know what you're saying. Rohan. Rohan. 
the king of Rohan. Theoden. King of Rohan. Well, amazing. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. You nailed that. You got that 100%. That's great. That was really good. Oh, <laughs> I did that one. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> I couldn't tell you. Oh, whoops. <clears throat> I couldn't tell you anything about that like, character because I don't know the name at all. But the way you said Theodrin, that's why you say it like that, probably. Probably. Anyway, that's all. <laughs> That's it. That's all. Okay. Uh. Anyway, she shows up. Yeah. Okay. So Theodrin. So this is, again, is the whole issue. Theodrin is the one who is tasked to help Nynaeve break her block. Right. Okay. Which is like a really important. We've kind of glazed over and it, but this is a big thing. And we got that she was a wilder and she had a block. And so she's helping Nynaeve. Yeah. And we, we also get that. We get, get it here. I feel like we learned that before, too. We got before that she was supposed to work with somebody mm-hmm. who had also broken down a block and was yeah. avoiding them. Yes. Like, in, like, even maybe in the Fires of Heaven yeah. when they first showed up in Saladar. Well, because that's the thing, because uh, Theodrin is the one. Now, ah? <laughs> Theodrin, yeah, you got me on that. Okay, Theodrin is the one who should have already been raised to the shawl. But since they don't have the oath rod, they can't raise her. So she's in this, like, weird limbo between Aes Sedai and Accepted. And it's like she's got the authority of almost an Aes Sedai, so she's and like she above accepted. And she doesn't have to wear the accepted dress. But she can't wear the shawl, and it's like it's it's like a weird situation. So yeah, she's the one who's supposed to get through to Nynaeve. Mm-hmm. And then we get their the, the whole like backstory on Theodrin, and I kind of well, like this because they And you they know bond. what? It actually is a little bit of a bonding moment yeah. because she asks Nynaeve, "What was your trick?" Yes. Because apparently Wilders develop. Tricks. Yeah, we we know that. That's yeah. a thing. Yeah. Tealing. Tealing. Yeah. She heals people. <laughs> yeah. She yeah. said people got well when they shouldn't have. Yeah. And then Theodron is like, oh, that's actually excellent. That's a good one. That's better mine than mine. Mine was terrible. Yeah. Mine was making boys want to kiss me or not kiss me. Yeah. Which I mean. Cool. Yeah, that's pretty. Nah, that's pretty. Yeah. Uh, okay. That's pretty surface yeah. level there, Theodron. Okay. <laughs> yeah. We get a lot of the surface level stuff. That news is pretty OP. Like it's. What does that mean? overpowered it's like a super overpowered oh like, okay like level one friggin spell here yeah what are we and doing? then her block was men any time <laughs> that like a man yeah. was around she could channel but if a man wasn't around then she couldn't channel it's a really funny thing because we get this whole backstory i actually like this backstory too it's a funny yeah. thing on how to break a block yeah. where there was a boy that she liked in tar valen and then the eyes that i let him sit in on the lesson so that she could channel but then she didn't know that he had a twin sister and then they like dressed the twin sister up as the boy. So then she was channeling. And then during the lesson while she was channeling, the girl who stood was stood up and stood like, up is like, ah, I'm actually I'm a, girl. a girl. It's like fantastic. And she's like, ah, and then, then she could channel it ever since then. Easy peasy. So how do we, so like this woman who had a block, but has no idea how the block was broken. Yeah. It just like happened because the I said I tricked her. How is she supposed to help Nynaeve channel when she's not angry? Like yeah. how do you trick Nynaeve into being angry but she's not angry? No, like, she's got to do like, like a that. like a whole Bruce Banner thing where it's like, oh, you want to know my secret is my secret is I'm always angry because like the Hulk, right? Yeah. This the secret for especially like in Marvel's yeah, yeah, universe yeah. is like he's always angry. <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> so sucks can, though. Well, you know, but you can become like the Hulk. So, like, you know, it's not that bad. It's not me. No, we actually would like other things, though. Because when she's, like, terrified, that's not angry. And then she can't channel. But that's the thing. She's always angry. No. No. Okay. No, no, no. I'm just, like, delving too much into this because... She's just... They just got to break it. They got to break this block. Yeah. Here we go. I know that we have to break it, but... How? I don't know. You know, I think that... Mogedian might be the key here. Mogedian was the one who originally saw Nynaeve's block and then like set it for what it was for us, the audience. The whole like fear Kay. thing, right? That was sure. Mogedian. Yeah. The very first time Nynaeve was compelled okay, and was like, oh, you have a block and it's this and this. If Nynaeve realizes that, it's like that she's like scared of the amount of power then maybe that's something she can overcome. Gotcha, gotcha. Because okay, if she only okay. thinks it's like, I can only channel when I'm angry, then where's the connection to the power when she's not angry, 
right? Yeah. If she realizes what it actually is, where Mogedian knows and told us. Mm -hmm. That's not a bad idea. I don't know. And we have Mogedian sitting right here. Well, I just kind of think it's like the whole, the... I know she's not sharing any information that she's not asked, but... Yeah. It's like the whole get over the whole fear of things, right? Because that's what you just made me think of. So like... And because we have this whole thing where it's like my fear is obviously spiders. Like I hate it. it's mm-hmm. the worst. Mm-hmm. Yes, I get it. And I have no intention of getting over yeah. it. Yeah, mine is bees. Yeah. And because... I watch like beekeeping videos sometimes but that's to like thing. help me. I'm not watching spider videos. Yeah. So the thing is you got to make them do the thing that they don't like. So it's just like you got to think you of like. Set, you like desensitize the yeah. thing. So, desen- so it's like what is Nynaeve not like? And then just like get a list of all the things that she hates. Anyway, and just like okay. Do all that. That's fine. Now, we got a plan here. We got a plan. Let's see. I don't know what Theo plan, plan is. 45 plan. 45 <laughs> one points. Point. One point per day. Work backwards. Work backwards. <laughs> we got it. Okay. So anyways, Nynaeve has apparently been avoiding her meetings. <laughs> she has been. Because she's like, would rather think about anything but herself. Yeah. And working on herself. It's like the person who like avoids therapy. Uh-huh. That's like literally what Nynaeve is doing right now. And I get it, <laughs> unfortunately. Oh, but, no. okay. okay, here's the thing. Apparently, Morel is the one who has ordered that Theodrin make Nynaeve attend yeah, their so meetings. They have you know, to work that's... together, whatever. And now, okay, I have to say I feel for Nynaeve here because in this setting, in where she is right now, she's a grown-ass woman. She's like more 30 than 20 right at somewhere on the 20s spectrum she in her mind in the life that she's lived is a grown-ass woman and she's being told where to go what to do who to speak to who to see where she can go what she can't do oh my god that sounds terrible it does sound terrible yeah but on the flip side to some women who might have lived like hundreds of years like i don't even know actually how old I said I are. Yeah. 20 some years is literally baby. Sure. And I get why they're treating the 20 year olds as such. It's like you got way further to go. So way you are further. Still, like if yeah. you're like over like 100, whatever, I don't even actually know, but yeah. hundreds of years. Yeah. Obviously, you seem like you know nothing. But as like a 20 something woman, to be told where you can go and what you can do, like, fuck off. That's the, that's the problem, isn't it? God, it's garbage. <laughs> right that's the issue. Yeah. You got it. Yeah. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah. All right. So now Nynaeve is super done with all of this. So then after Theodrin leaves, she decides she's going to head back to her room. And then a freaking yellow sister comes running into her yep. and knocks her over. Degdar, the one that is already being a bee. Oh, my God. And so this is where Nynaeve is like, I'm going to leave and go find Rand. I hate this place. Yeah. So why is she running? Because. Oh, because someone arrived. Yeah. The emissary from the tower. That's right. That's like the big thing. That's that the big thing. Yeah. Okay, so Nynaeve heads back to her room, and then when she's there, Mogedian bangs into the room and holds up her hands and is like, look, ruined. Yeah, I've been doing laundry all day. <laughs> yeah, and so Mogedian's all complainy, yeah. and Nynaeve is annoyed, so then she uses the power to, like, you know, her a is little Nynaeve, smack. Is Nynaeve getting a little bit too comfortable with the whole physical? Yes. It's like... Absolutely. The first instinct is just like... All of this is terrible, and yep. I don't like it, and I also... I'm not happy with how long they've been keeping Mogedian and then like super long. What's the end game? Yeah. What's the end game? Because Mogedian isn't one to, you know, I wasn't even a hundred percent sure as Modian was like actually on Rand's side. And I can tell you a hundred percent Mogedian is not on sure. his women's side. Yeah. Not. Yeah. And the second that she is free, she's hiding in the shadows and planning her revenge. Like the second. Yeah, I, I agree. As Modian of all of them, like he seemed like he maybe had a chance. And even of like, then, I was like, mm, yeah, "Don't trust he's this guy." Kind of he's turning like, uh, on you, yeah, I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah, totally. So, yeah. What's the end game? Well, she keeps threatening to turn her in. Yeah, as which a Persegan. also isn't going to go well. It's not going to go well, especially because the I said I don't even believe that the Forsaken are like out. Yeah, and, and they that, don't believe you as an acceptor. No, but Mogedian doesn't know that. So this True. threat is working. The threat works. We get the emotions that like, I'm just going to turn you in then. Yeah. 
And like they're like real emotions. She can't necessarily hide those emotions. No, she can't yeah. at all. Her face is still, but she's like legitimately scared yeah. of being turned in. She doesn't get that these I said I are probably just gonna let her free and like not take it seriously. Totally. So this is like bad news bears. This is a bad situation. <laughs> Plus she's like wearing a collar. No, she's wearing a necklace. Necklace? It's a At necklace. one point she was doing the washing and her and her necklace, her pretty silver yeah. jewel encrusted necklace, whatever it is, totally. looked out of place while she was Yeah, no. It's great. No one's washing. gonna be like, Hey, what's that necklace? Yeah. <laughs> take it off. Take it off. No. No. Can't. can't. <laughs> you don't take know. it off. You can't. Do. Don't know how. No one can. Yeah. All of this is bad. Anyway, so they're going to start their lesson. Mogedian is like, okay, well, what do you want to know? Yes. Because they have to ask. She's not willingly giving up information. She wants to know how to detect if a man is channeling. And I didn't think that that was something you could do. Well, it's cool. But it turns out. It's a weave. It's a weave. It's a weave you can do to detect it. So and it's like, complicated, especially without a man to practice on. Yes. It's a shame you haven't uh, healed Loghain yet. Huh. <laughs> Good huh? one. Okay. But that's the thing. Mm-hmm. So with Rand, we know that men can feel the goosebumps mm-hmm. of a woman embracing Sidar. And women can see the glow on other women. Yes. But can men, men can men feel other men? Did uh, we get we that? did get that from Rand and Taim. Right. He's like when he's embracing, I can feel I can feel it. I can't okay. see it, but I can feel Whatever but it is. But they don't know what the ultimate power level of what they can get to is. Right, right. Okay. But it seems like women can do that because it's like, oh, you're going to be strong. And that's how Maureen was like, oh, you're going to be like a thousand times stronger than anybody ever has been before. Because they can sense that. They can that. like sense like where you should be able to go. Okay. But the only thing is the women sensing the men yes. is like a specific weave It's a and weave. It's, it's not like a feeling. It's a, you have to a- actively do the weave. Okay. And Nynaeve thinks that she wants to learn this because it would be helpful because she might go see Rand. Yes. Okay. I think that's our little tidbit. I think that she's going. Yeah. Okay, you're you're all on board. I want it. Yeah, I think okay. that like I'm more predicting it because I want it to happen because I'm <laughs> sick of this salad. You know or... I understand that. Yeah, I get it. All right. So eventually the door bangs open. Elaine doesn't know how to knock. She scares everybody. Literally, no one knocks, and it's just like bang. Like that's how I want to start opening doors. Just like kick it open. Like don't. I'm gonna start doing that. Don't though. So now there's news. Yes. This is Ooh. the news we we're talking yeah. about. It's emissary. From Elida, the whole village is turning over because of it, and Nynaeve is annoyed because they literally told them that Elida knew about Saladar. Here we are. Like, we saw that, and they're like, no, she doesn't know. Yeah. She does know. All right. So, Nynaeve dismisses Mogedian, and after she leaves, Nynaeve asks if Elaine knows the message, but she doesn't. Yeah. And Elaine is super worried that the Saladar Aes Sedai might decide to go back to the tower to make the tower whole again. So, the question is, what is Tamra saying to the hall? Not Tamra. Tarna. Tarna. Tarna is saying oh, to the hall. it's a little print. That's okay. So... How are you feeling? Oh, it looks like T-A... Yeah, okay. How do you feel about the whole, are the Saladar Aes Sedai at all thinking about going back to the tower? Because Elaine's like worried about it, but is that a real thing? I don't think so. I don't think that's a real thing to be concerned about. When they came to... Especially now that they have the numbers. Yeah. Like, no. We actually got like a numbers count where there's about a third in the tower... And there is more than that in Saladar. Yeah. And there's another third that's like scattered yeah, in the world. Yeah, and we actually did glaze over the whole Bryn thing. But yeah. apparently he's really annoyed because he has this whole army. Yeah. And he's not doing anything Well, and it. he, at this point, he says, this is as much as I can do. Like, we've reached capacity. That's it. Are this, we going to yeah. fight anybody like, we, now? We're here. We're, we've done what we were supposed to do. We're here now. Let's let's do this. Right. Because they have. So they have the numbers. They have the army. They have yeah. apparently maybe a chosen Amarillin. They have a hall. They have everything. And now here's an emissary. Let's do this thing. So like what? Let's go get him. What now? Go chop off Elida's head. Yeah. Whoa. Let's do it. Right. What, what, what would you do? That's, that's what it. I would that's do. That's what I'd probably do okay. too. So, you know that's what I would do. But you're Except not. Except I like Elida, so. <laughs> so not, you're not thinking that they're going to like go back crawling to the tower. Oh, f- crawling? No. I just got to ask. If anything, it'll be like, we'll come back, but we have power now. We have the numbers. We have the army. We have the. 
So like two within the tower co-mingling. No, 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 no. Not that. Okay. Depose. Okay. Depose okay. Elida. We're oh, coming in. Oh, she's never going to agree to that. No, Elida won't. Yeah. But like maybe the other Aes Sedai in the tower will. Yeah. Okay. okay politics. Okay, okay. It's a politics game. Yeah, it is politics. Game of houses. There we go. That's literally what this is. Uh, I'm excited to read on. You should be. Things are amping up. By the time this comes out, I think the show will have been out. That's exciting. So many things going on right now. I can't even keep my head on straight. I have I'm other news. I'm super excited. What? I have news. What? The next episode yeah. has my favorite chapter in the book. What? I'm this early? It. I'm calling it. I can't believe it. So here's the thing. I There's, can't wait. Okay. This book is so good. There are so many great chapters. Like the rest of this book is just phenomenal. Yeah, that's what I've been told. Some people would say that that's a spoiler telling me that. That the book is good? Yeah. Hey guys, I don't know if you know this. But I like these books. <laughs> okay. <laughs> They're fantastic. But you know that I like big events that are important and I yeah. think are critical to the series. Sure. And like sometimes heartfelt. Sure. And you okay. know, you're like, okay, I dig it. Okay. Can't wait. It's in the next episode. I can't I'm wait. I'm calling it already. Yeah. I waited till the last chapter of The Fires of Heaven and it, it's just. Yeah, you this. did. Here we're it is. This. Okay. And we are zooming because we are trying to get a little bit ahead before the show comes out so that we can like do our other stuff. Yeah. So check us out on YouTube for our show recaps and reactions. Yes. That's probably already up there, realistically. And on podcast apps, it's The Wheel Weaves Watches. That's right. You have to subscribe to the new show. That's where all our show stuff is going to be. Absolutely. Yeah. Can't wait. Here we go. Before you get caught in a nightmare, after you're told not to get caught in a nightmare until you're in Riyadh, I'm going to say that this is part of the pattern now. Yeah, it's part of the pattern. Well, that's all for now, folks. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the episode, and thanks for listening. The Wheel Weaves is hosted by Danny and Brett, produced by Danny and Brett with Essen, Passion Socks, Mozyme, Moltude, Benjamin, Michelle O'Brien, Jamie Young, Cody Fouts, Megan Smiley, Jonathan Reese, and Kaz. With music by Audionautics.com. If you're interested in supporting us and the podcast, you can find us on our Patreon page at patreon.com slash the Wheel Weaves podcast. For all things The Wheel Weaves, like how to get in touch with us, how to send us really cool shot glasses, our social media links, how to join our Discord, and for just some general information about the show and the hosts, you can head over to our website at thewheelweavespodcast.com. And as always, don't forget to tell a friend about us, to leave us that five-star review, and to hit that subscribe button over on YouTube. We'd really, really appreciate that, and it does help a lot. Thanks again for listening. This really is part of the pattern now.